Hi, and welcome to Module 2 in this video course, in the first video um, lecture on polymerase, and this module is about sets. It's the first lecture about sets, in which we'll cover the basics. Uh, now, in a, in a math course in a math department, you'll have sets defined in very, in very abstract terms, in terms of axioms and properties and so on. We'll talk about some properties of sets, um, but we're not going to, as I said in the first lecture, we're not going to be very careful with, with, with the formalism, and we're going to focus instead on more of an intuitive grasp of what sets are, being correct, of course, but with a more intuitive grasp of what sets are. And for our purposes, a set is just any collection of objects. It could be any kind of collection at all, from a really simple collection of how many, a set of all oranges you have in your basket in the supermarket, to a slightly more complicated, the set of all possible fruits in the supermarket, um, to a mixed set of things that you could have gotten in your basket if you shop online, to the set of all things in the universe. Right? A set is any collection of objects. In political science and social sciences more generally, a set typically takes one of a few types. The most common type is the set of all values that a particular variable can take. Now, I'll talk about variables a little later, but for the purposes of this um, module, and for our purposes right now, a variable just is something that takes multiple values, and it could be something like GDP, right? So it's something of interest. So the GDP of a country can take a large number of values. In fact, it can take any real number. So we say that the GDP is in the set of all real numbers. On the other hand, we mentioned immigration, can take values in the integers, net immigration. So net immigration is in the set of all integers. Right? And the most common sets we'll deal with are, in fact, the real numbers and the integers. And that's why we deal with them first. But a set is more general than that. A set can be any collection of things. So in this lecture, we're going to introduce sets and show you some basic notation. In the next lecture, we'll go into a little more detail with sets. Um, but first, we're going to introduce variables and, and make it a easier for understanding sets better. Okay, but first, let's do a little notation with sets. Okay. So, to start, we'll say how to write a set. Um, in general, we'll use capital letters in these lectures for a set and lowercase letters for an element of a set. Now, this already brings up the question, what's an element of a set? Well, if a set is an agglomeration, a collection of objects, an element is a particular object in the set. So, we'll write like this. So, if this is a set... A is a set of things. It can be anything. It can be um, net immigration for all countries in the world. It could be the set of GDPs for all country in the countries in the world. It can be the set of numbers of civil wars prior in the last five years in all countries in the world. Really anything. It can be anything you want it to be. It's a set of things. And we'll let little a be in that set. So a is a single element. So it might be the GDP of one country. It might be the net migration of one country. Um, it might be the number of, of civil wars for one country, and so on. Right? If you're doing surveys, A might be the set of all possible answers to a survey question. Right? So you might ask someone, how favorable you, are you towards the president? And they might say, not at all, a little, um, some, some, medium, or a lot, or something like that. Right? Can you tell them to do surveys a lot? Um, so that's the all possible answers. And little a, then, is a particular answer to that question. Right. How do we represent that, it's, that little a is an element of the set? We use this particular notation. It looks like an, kind of like an e, but not quite. That reads as in. So a is in the set b. Or a is an element of the set b. So that sort of e could be in the set or an element of the set. That's how you read that. Now you have to define set somehow. So how do you do that? Well, the simplest way is just to actually enumerate all the elements of the set. So for instance, you might have the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And these are curly brackets if I don't do a great job in, in drawing. Um, curly brackets typically represent discrete sets, sets that have a discrete number of things, a countable number of objects. To, to use the word we talked about last time, a countable number of objects is, a, is something you can count. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So you might have a curly bracket like this. Um, in this case, the set 1, 
It's a set of numbers 1, 3, and 5, not including 2 and 4, so 2 and 4 would not be in the set. How do you draw not in the set? Well, you can write 2 is not in the set with a line through it. And those are sets. Um, there are lots of other kinds of sets. So you might have a continuous number of things in a set. Right? We mentioned the real numbers has goes on forever. Right? It's not like 1, 2, and 3 where there are gaps between them. The real numbers go on forever. So how would we write that? Well, if you wanted to write a set of all things between 0 and 1 inclusive, we use square brackets. So here, 0 and 1. This means the square brackets say this set is the set of all things between 0 and 1, including 0 and including 1. What if we don't want to include 0 and 1? Well, we can write the set of all things between 0 and 1, not including 0 and 1, by using parentheses. This means the set of all things between 0 and 1, not including 0 and 1. And we can make things in between. This means the set of all things between 0 and 1, including 0, but not including 1. And so on. And, the, and there's a few more ways we'll talk about how to make sets, but this is the, these are general um, set notation. Now, we can also write sets in a different way you might have seen before, when, if you've ever seen Venn diagrams. So let's try this again. Um, a set is a collection of objects. We could write it. So here's my set A. Now let's say I had two sets. Now here, this, this ball just means everything in the ball is in set A. Everything outside the ball is not in set A. Now we could draw a set B here, which is different from set A. Um, the way I've drawn it here, B is everything in the ball. And not, and not anything outside the ball. So A and B are completely separate. They have no overlap. We call the overlap between sets the intersection between sets. So it's an intersection. So this intersection would be 0. We can write that formally by saying A that upside down U means intersection. So this means the intersection of A and B is 0, or more accurately, is the empty set. What's the empty set? It's the set that has nothing in it. Right? Sets have stuff in it. If you wanted to find a set with nothing in it, as you might want to do, say right here, you use the empty set. Um, the equal sign here is an equivalence. It means the stuff on the left of the equals is the same as the stuff on the right of the equals. We'll do that in a little more when we talk about operators. But um, here the intersection is 0, and you can see that in the picture. Now, I can draw a different. Goodness. I have to go back to my slideshow because. OK, um, we can draw a different kind of set. Here's A, and here's B. And let's call this area in the middle here C. This is the shaded area. Now the intersection equals C. So the area that's common to both A and B is the intersection, and that is C. Now what if we want to include the sets together and draw them together? We can do that too. If an upside down U is the intersection, you might have guessed that the a regular U is the union. The union of two sets is the combination of all elements in both sets. So here you go. Okay. All the shaded area here, which we can make called D, is in the union. So that's the union of two sets. And you can do more stuff with that. We'll talk about more when we do with operators and sets. But this is the basic idea. A set is a group of things that can have any properties you want, really. Um, and you can define them on top of it. But a set is just a group of, of objects put together in a collection that's important because we might care about those particular objects and only those objects. So if we have a survey response, the number of possible responses to the survey is the set of all objects we care about in that particular case. If we're solving equations, for instance, if we're doing game theory, we have equations we need to solve. 
then the set of all solutions to those equations is another set of interest. And there are lots of sets like this we're going to deal with um, in this course, but for now, here's the introduction. In the next um, lecture, we're going to talk for a moment about, we're going to step away from sets for the moment and introduce variables and constants so we can be more general about what we're doing here. Thank you.